it looks as though we are going to get the answer to the HS2 question and that the decision has been made. Uh, HS2 will not go beyond Birmingham, although uh, some people are trying to spin it at the moment as it will, but just not on HS2 tracks. I think that rather, so stretches, rather stretches the definition of uh, high-speed rail. Uh, we don't know, the, uh, we don't think just yet. I mean, moments ago I was talking to someone, Cabinet hadn't signed off on this. One uh, government source was suggesting to me it's getting rather late. Maybe they'll be behind the curtain just before uh, Rishi Sunak goes on stage tomorrow and, and sign off it there. But there will be a sign off, there will be a policy announced and what we don't know is all the detail how much what what will Rishi Sunak do with the cash saved will he give all of it to as it were compensatory uh, schemes mainly relating to the north but all around transport we think there may have been a late change to all of this in that uh, under pressure from some lobbying he may have moved uh, the end point in London from uh, near Wormwood Scrubs Old Oak Common 30 minutes from central London, he may have gone for the Euston uh, terminus that a lot of people were lobbying for. As for the rest of today in Lou, while we were waiting uh, for that uh, announcement, there was policy floating, the Justice Secretary talking about maybe sending prisoners abroad to serve their prison sentences. That didn't sound entirely fleshed out. Very feisty rhetoric uh, from the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, uh, talking about, and as you said, a hurricane of migrants. It's going to be tough to turn some issues like that into the bright future that's on, talked about on the slogans uh, around here, and tough as well for Rishi Sunak when he weaves that HS2 announcement in with uh, pro-cars, uh, pro-maths teaching, and some of his other uh, agenda. How does he make that all coherent? That's tomorrow. Here's how today went. The HS2 cut and the announcements about what the government plans to do with the money saved from that are still bunged up in the system. And for the third day of a four-day conference, the wait for confirmation has dominated the headlines. Are you cancelling the HS2? No, I'm not going to comment into all that speculation. Is that, but was I that would a have, no, I'm not cancelling? I'm not going to comment on the speculation. You've made it to Manchester. Will HS2 do the same? Well, morning, Sally. Morning, John. Thanks so much for having me. No, it's great to be here in Manchester kicking off our conference. Oh. Rumours still persist there could be an emergency cabinet meeting to sign off on the decision. Is that the only new working track we're going to see? <laughs> Very funny, Gary. Have you had the call for the emergency Thank cabinet you. yet? Has no the phone pinged? Uh, there's no, nothing in my diary. One contractor is hoping the delay means Rishi Sunak has been listening to last-minute pleas to rethink. I personally sent an email to the uh, the Prime Minister yesterday uh, following a conversation with him at, uh, in Manchester. So uh, he has all of the facts. We're surrounded here by slogans talking about long-term decisions for a brighter future. This slogan might be not exactly ringing true, looking a bit thin if the decision goes the wrong way, you feel. It certainly does, you know. Uh, you know, brave decisions, brighter future. Uh, all fine words, but actually, um, they, they, they mean nothing if you're going to curtail investment. The conference hall was as full as it's been for Suella Braverman. The Home Secretary warned of an immigration hurricane that was coming towards the country and attacked human rights laws and liberals who backed them. Our country has become enmeshed in a dense net of international rules that were designed for another era. And it is Labour that turbocharged their impact by passing the misnamed Human Rights Act. I'm surprised they didn't call it the Criminal Rights Act. <laughs> the Luxury Beliefs Brigade sit in their ivory towers telling ordinary people that they are morally deficient because they dare to get upset about the impact of illegal migration, net zero or habitual criminals. And you can be sure of one thing. People with luxury beliefs will flock to Labour at the next general election. When the Home Secretary criticised gender ideology, one Conservative London Assembly member quietly heckled. There's no such thing as gender ideology. No, no, it's, it's, this is true. Andrew Boff was escorted out by police and marched out of the conference compound. He said the party risked looking homophobic. 
she started to build up all the tropes, woke ideology, tender ideology, and all the rest of it. And we know what, all, what those gateway words are, and there are gateway words uh, to start vilifying some very vulnerable sections of the community. Others here mutter the parties on a post-Brexit rightward lurch. You may have noticed that Nigel Farage is wandering around your conference, first time in decades. Would you have him back as a member of the Tory party? Now, uh, the, the Tory party is a very broad church, right? Rishi Sunak was asked uh, uh, earlier if he consider having you as a member, and he talked about this being a broad church party. He didn't turn it down as an idea. No, he didn't, did he? Well, if he did that, if he did that, half the hall would be absolutely furious. <laughs> Last night, Dame Pretty Patel, the last Home Secretary, went to the dance floor with Nigel Farage. It does seem like a moment, though. That's the person who was Home Secretary until not so long ago. Yeah, but that's just a normal evening for me. <laughs> Would it be a good thing if Nigel Farage was in the party? You seem to be very happy together last night. <laughs> Jiving. Tomorrow, the Prime Minister is expected to repeat his promise to rework a discredited political system and start the process of convincing voters he is the candidate of change with the ideas to deliver it. Well, we were expecting to have an interview with the Prime Minister tonight, but we were told he had no time to talk to Channel 4 News after all. Joining me now is Michelle Donlan, the Secretary of State for Science and Innovation. Thank you for coming to talk to us. There is a bit of a pattern, though, developing around Rishi Sunak and many ministers at this conference. And I, if I can kindly put it sort of disingenuousness, I mean, there he was this morning on the television and radio, basically sort of making out that the decision on HS2 hasn't mm -hmm. been made. He wants to make it properly. He wants to take his mm -hmm. time. Yet all the briefings are that this is going to be announced tomorrow or imminently. The decision's effectively been taken. Maybe it needs some sort of formal cabinet rubber stamp. It's just not true to say the decision has not really been made, has it? Well, look, there's been speculation all week. Commentators have been saying the government yeah. was going to do this, the government was going to do that. there's a lack of honesty around the response, today. is what I mean. No, no, absolutely not. In fact, the Prime Minister's been extremely honest. He said he's a man that likes to take stock of the evidence, no, no, go through the detail. he has decided when he has, you know, because the briefings are all going out to the newspapers. And there's a lot of speculation. It's, coming out. it's more than speculation, it's briefing. So there hasn't been an official announcement. I think no, it's exactly. right that the Prime Minister has taken his time to consider the facts and the evidence. And surely that is what we want from a but Prime Minister. But it's the Minister. announcement that hasn't been made, not the decision. And he was out there this morning saying it's the decision that hasn't been taken. Yes. And that's just, that, 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 that lacks candour. This is the man who wanted to be full of integrity and transparency and a new broom after the chaos of Boris Johnson. It turns out it's, it's not that different, is it? And you can see that in all of the other things that he's saying, where he pretends to be saving us from a meat tax or compulsory shopping zones. And all this kind of nonsense is just not true. No, what you're saying is not true. Um, so what we've seen is a prime minister that takes stock of the evidence, that goes through thoroughly to get the best deal for the British public. That's what we did on Horizon just a few weeks ago. I did that working with this Prime Minister. And yes, sometimes that means that things take a little bit longer, but it means that we get better deals for the taxpayer. And what we announced the other week, which you've just referenced, in terms of the Green Agenda, was about taking people with us, doing it in a responsible, yeah. proportionate way, which is but what my constituents way, have been calling for. He, you know, he, he claimed to have saved us from a meat tax. We've had Claire Coutinho repeating that at conference. We've had Mark Harper and Andrew Bowie, so you know, claiming all these crazy things that were just never going to happen. So and and that, that sort of feels like we really are in post-truth politics now. It's just like America, and you can just say whatever you like because that's political campaigning. No, there has been several people, as you will know only too well, calling for a meat tax. There has been several... Well, not the uh, Labour Party. No, and then look... look Who are these people? You know? so, well, the Climate Coalition, for one. And then if we look at the They're issue around... The if we look at the issue around the, the seven bin scenario, that was in consultations that were, were produced. So these are things that have been muted by several different but actors. It's nonsense to say that you have saved us from this because you would only saved us from any of these things if they were going to happen. They were never going to happen. So that, that's why it kind of, it just feels like... It's not the new nonsense. type of political it, campaigning is just saying things that aren't true and then saying, we saved you from that. Hang on, it's not nonsense if we are saying to the British public that actually we're going to achieve net zero. 
in a way that is affordable to everybody, in a way yeah. that is doable. There is no point setting targets for target's sake. Yeah, but people are still... I mean, you, you know, you go around saying you're saving people from five, ten thousand pounds. You know what? You're just delaying it. They're still going to have to buy heat pumps, but five years later down the road. Well, no, if you look at your own... No, his technology is advancing, and that's what we are doing in my department. And part of that announcement was also investing £150 million pounds into green yeah. fellowships to enable us to develop that technology. So it is more affordable. There's a lot of sort of culture war going on here, though, isn't there, in this conference? I mean, do you agree no. with Priti Patel? Uh, yeah. Sorry, not with Priti Patel. Uh, do you agree with the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, that there is a hurricane of migrants coming to Britain? So, first of all, that is definitely not part of any culture war. And I, re I reject this culture war phrase. Is I think it's right? standing up for common sense. Is she right that there is a hurricane of migrants coming to Britain? It is indisputable that we have had big problems when it comes to illegal immigration and that the British public are fed up Is there a that. hurricane? Hurricanes, I've covered a few hurricanes. Yeah. They're violent, <laughs> they destroy everything, they kill people. That's a very powerful word to use. Look, the Home Secretary uses very different words than I use. We're totally so different people. you wouldn't people. use that word? I would use... I, I don't know what the language I would have used because I'm not Home Secretary, but what I'm saying is we're different individuals. But how I would describe it is I would say that the UK has been facing um, a large quantity of illegal immigration for a sustained period of time. And that is unfair. It's yeah. unfair to the who's hard working charge? people who's, who's, up and down been, this country. Who's been running the country well, while, look this, what we've been doing. while all this happened? Let me answer one question at a time. So what we've been doing is we have been trying to close all the loopholes, leave no stone unturned and do a multi-pronged approach on this. Crisis. There was no boats crisis until you... Well, that is not yeah. true. I mean, that is false to say that this government created the boats crisis. This government made it a priority to deal with it, while the opposition there are quite no happy crisis, to just welcome all these people that are cheating the system. Surely fairness is in the DNA of the British public. Surely it is deeply unfair to let people come that are actually economic migrants. They're not in genuine need. Every person that comes here that way is taking the place of a genuine person that needs help. And that's how we should look at it. Michelle Donnellan, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank Thanks. you.